I've noticed people posting on Facebook recently um, the 10 most significant films that they've watched which have influenced their lives or which are the 10 most wonderful songs that really affected your life. And of course, everybody's bored doing the, the lockdown at the moment, got to find something to do. And then challenging other people to uh, come up with similar lists. And I thought about it and I mean, I like music and I like watching films. And there's a lot of them that I've enjoyed, but I can't say that there's anything that's really changed my life or significantly you know, affected the way I see the world or anything like that. However, there have been quite a few books that I've read which have actually signified some kind of turning point in, in my life, in the, the way I, I relate to God or the way I see the world. And these are mainly, in fact, almost without exception, Christian books. Um, and so I thought I'd, I'd just try and think of, of which books had really affected me over the 40 years that I've been a Christian. And I managed to come up with, with 10. This is apart from the Bible, of course, you know, before anybody makes a comment. Um, the Bible has very significantly affected my life. And I've read it several times all the way through and in different languages and different versions. When I first became a Christian, I think the, uh, the NIV, the New International Version, had just recently been published and I saw it in a bookshop and I bought that and then I quite liked it so that became my favourite Bible for a while. Since then I've used other versions, RSV, uh, Revised Standard Version, New American Standard. Um, I'm currently reading through the ESV, the English Standard Version, UK version, of course, and I quite like it. That's a, another recent one that's, that, that's just been published and become quite popular. Calvinist bias, which I'm not, but nevertheless, it's, it's a good, good translation. Of course, I've also read uh, several Hungarian versions, and I've read my Bible through in Romanian and German, I think, and in Greek and Hebrew, but anyway, that's beside the point. So, what are the ten books that really have uh, had an impact on me over the years? Well, the first one I actually read before I became a Christian, so it would have been about 1978 or 79, and I've tried to find it on the internet, and I can't actually remember specifically which book it was, but it was a book about Nostradamus, the uh, 16th century French seer, um, and was, it was trying to explain his uh, very opaque quatrains uh, as to uh, how they, you know, he predicted Hitler and all kinds of things, and it's all highly doubtful now he's looking back on it. <clears throat> but there was one, one of his quatrains, it's actually Centuries 10, number 72, which predicted that there will be a great war or something uh, starting in 1999. And that, for some reason, just had a, a real heavy effect on me. And I started, this. I mean, this was 20 years before, of course, 20 years before that date. It's now 20 years after. But I kept worrying about the future and thinking, you know, what's going to happen? Is it going to be an atomic war? And <clears throat> are we all going to survive? And... Um, it was, you know, over the top kind of thing, but I do believe God was working on my life because uh, my friends were praying for me, my parents. So that was when I just decided, I just went up to my bedroom in December uh, 1979 and just said something like this to God, okay, Jesus, I think I want to take you seriously from now on. That was my great you know, prayer of repentance and, you know, the sinner's prayer and all that. But it was effective and uh, just the way I, I, I started to see things, the way I started to uh, view things was, was, was completely changed. My whole mentality actually changed from that point. Started getting interested in the things of God and reading lots of things. Okay, the next one, seeing that I was coming to the end of my PhD in chemistry, um, after this initial sort of amazing experience of God, I thought, well, okay, what about science then? And uh, what I found was uh, a book called The Genesis Flood by John Wickham and Henry Morris, first published in 1961. 
and um, big thick book. And I'm not a geologist, but I've kind of read that through and, uh, and found it very convincing. So, so from that point on, really, I, I kind of decided evolution was wrong and uh, that the world is probably pretty young. And, uh, and I had no problem with uh, believing in creation based on the Bible and also based on the scientific evidence. And there's a lot more um, information available now than there was uh, 40 years ago. But um, I still think, you know, the creationist position is, is very convincing. Another book I read was uh, by F.F. F. Bruce, first published in 1943, called The New Testament Documents, Are They Reliable? Now this was just looking at all the, uh, the textual evidence for the reliability of the New Testament and sort of looking at the very earliest manuscripts and the manuscript tradition and the, the huge number of, uh, of copies that are available. And, uh, and so that was convincing really about the reliability of the, of the word of God. Now, when I was brought up to attend church uh, in my life, I was actually uh, raised in the Baptist church mainly. Um, so we weren't charismatic, but for some reason, my, my stepmother, after I got saved, gave me the book Nine O'Clock in the Morning by Dennis Bennett, first published in 1970, um, which is about the beginnings of the charismatic movement in the, uh, in the traditional churches. And it, I just really fascinated by this, like sort of, wow, I knew the story of Pentecost, but I didn't realize that people still spoke in tongues today. Um, and I just prayed that, you know, that just really interested me. And I, I started praying that if God wanted me to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, as they say, um, then it would happen. And very soon after, a, a friend of my parents who was a Pentecostal pastor prayed for me and I was baptised in the Spirit and, and spoke in tongues. And so that kind of changed my changed my faith from being more of the Baptist kind to more of the Pentecostal kind. And that's been a lasting uh, influence on my life. Now, an interesting one I read was The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey, first published in 1970. Um, talking about the end times and the end of the world and uh, the signs of the end and the pre-tribulation rapture and all that kind of thing, which I'd never heard of. I got quite interested in this. Um, I also talked to my dad about it and he'd never heard of it and he read it as well. And I suppose that influenced the, the way I thought about the, the end times for, for quite a long time. Um, I no longer accept the dispensational view or the pre-tribulation rapture, but I did for a long time. And that book really was what what affected me on that. Then later on I went to Bible college. This was quite a bit later, about 10 years into my Christian life. And as part of a project for um, an essay that we had to do, I read The Gospel of the Kingdom by George Eldon Ladd, written in 1959. His concept of the kingdom as being dynamic reign rather than a kind of geographical area over which God reigned just really grasped me and that's really again that's changed my way of of how I view the kingdom of God. Just the concept of the kingdom of God as it appeared in Jesus uh, ministry when he did things like cast out demons and heal the sick and, and that kind of thing is uh, is something that changed my way of thinking again I guess. Now much later on when I moved to Hungary um, I was working with with a church in which the, someone I was, I was uh, working in the same church as was attending, uh, this was a Pentecostal church, but he was ascending, attending a Seventh-day Adventist Bible college. And once he started really coming out with all kinds of stuff I thought was really weird, I thought I'd better look into this. So I read quite a lot online, but one book which was interesting was uh, Seventh-day Adventism Renounced by Canwright, published in 1914, one time before he had been an Adventist pastor for a long time, and then he came to uh, study it and to reject it. And so that it was a very thorough study. And things that I've read, which have been written much later, really contain pretty well the same kind of, of arguments that he used. So that was, uh, that was a powerful book. The next one is The Potter's Promise by Leighton Flowers. And we're leaping forward now to the fairly recent past. This was published in uh, 2015. Now, this was a guy who... Um, was brought up in the church. He, he became a Calvinist for 10 years and then he changed his mind. And he's um, 
written this book about why he believes that the Bible does not, in fact, teach Calvinism. And <clears throat> he goes very thoroughly into the Calvinist um, proof texts. And the, he's got a, also got an online ministry, which, I, which I've listened to quite a lot of. But in this book, he deals with uh, Romans 9, um, which is a Calvinist stronghold. And he explains the way he sees it. And having got used to his explanation, it took me a while, actually, because I wasn't quite sure what he was talking about at first. But once I got to understand what it was that he was saying... I find his arguments very convincing and his explanation of Romans 8 and 9 as well as Ephesians 1 and the other Calvinist proof texts to be very clear, very obvious now to me that they do not teach what Calvinism says they do. So I've never been a Calvinist, but now I'm more convinced than ever that I, I will not, that I shouldn't be one. More recently, a book I read is the A War of Loves by David Bennett, written in 2018. This guy is Australian. Uh, he was, when he was at university, he was a, a gay activist and pretty well atheistic and strongly um, critical and uh, rejecting uh, Christianity. Um, then he had an amazing uh, conversion when uh, a girl prayed for him in a pub. And he just had an amazing experience of, of God and of the Holy Spirit and, and gave his life to the Lord. And um, this, is, this is basically his testimony of how he gave up the gay lifestyle. And, um, and now he, he still considers himself gay, uh, but he's a, a celibate man and he considers his relationship with God to be more important than, than what he had to give up. So I can really identify with that um, to a pretty great extent. And... Uh, I'd certainly recommend that for anyone interested in the subject. And the most recent one um, I've read is The Foundation of Augustinian Calvinism by Ken Wilson, published in 2019. So I've basically just finished this one very recently. And, and he goes into actually the background of, of, of how the kind of theology that became Calvinism was introduced into the church by Augustine, first of all, in the... Uh, the fourth, early 4th fourth century, and the, the, the Gnostic Manichaean background of, uh, of these teachings of, of determinism and total depravity and this kind of thing. And it's uh, pretty eye-opening, I'd say. Um, if I was convinced not to be a Calvinist before, then I'm even more convinced now by this book. So, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed these. Uh, so, basically, yeah, those are, those are the books which have helped to shape and to change my mind on various things um, over the 40 years. Um, so those are, those, are, those are ten books, but one that's definitely worth a an honourable mention, as they sometimes say in these in these lists, uh, is uh, someone who has only written two books, and I've never read either of them, but I have listened to a lot of his teaching, and read a lot of his of his teaching, and that is uh, Steve Gregg. His website is the the Narrow Path, and he's helped me to understand. The Bible. He teaches all through the Bible. He teaches on uh, topics as well as as well as just systematically going through the Bible verse by verse. And um, he's helped me to change my view on eschatology. So since um, having the view of dispensationalism, I say at the beginning of my Christian life, I've changed my mind twice on the on the end times. Uh, this last one maybe about four years ago or so. Um, Steve Gregg teaches uh, the book of Revelation and the, and the view of eschatology from the point of view of amillennialism, which basically was the traditional view of the church from about the 5th century through until about the 18th, um, and also takes a partial preterist view of, of the book of Revelation. So he's very convincing, um, and I tend to lean now towards those two things, amillennialism and partial preterism. I'll probably do some videos on that as well. Um, not to say that I won't change my mind ever again, but that's where I stand at the moment. So at the moment then, these are books that have influenced my way of thinking and um, my rather eclectic view of Christian theology, should I say. Not eclectic view of religion, but of Christian theology. So, hope that was helpful, and maybe you'd like to read some of these books yourselves. <laughs> See you soon.